Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to discuss about uh, conceptual model and nursing theories. Usually, we all have a uh, sort of confusion like what exactly is conceptual model? What is nursing theory? Uh, are they both similar or are they both different? If they are different, in what way they are different? Uh, so sometimes uh, students, what they do is we just memorize and we study. Like a conceptual model means it is loosely structured. Theory means it is very, uh, you know, concretely structured, etc. But even without understanding the meaning behind what is the difference between a conceptual model and a theory. So this small video is a small attempt in order to uh, try to shed light on uh, how exactly is a theory different from a conceptual model uh, based on uh, the views of Jacqueline Fawcett. Okay, uh, I want to tell all of you uh, students like uh, Fawcett is such a great uh, nursing legend. Uh, we all are very proud of her because uh, uh, she is a person who has tried to uh, put shed more light on uh, nursing theories and conceptual models and uh, she has written a lot of uh, she has published, uh, she has more than, I think, uh, 200 publications to her credit uh, trying to explain about each theory and uh, trying to uh, trying to tell the uh, readers what exactly is nursing theory, why we should have nursing theory and conceptual models in our profession. And, uh, you know, such a great work she has done. The reason is she has tried to uh, explain uh, nursing theories in a very simplified way. She has uh, made an attempt in order to try to explain what exactly is conceptual model and theory from a, a practical point of view. Okay, so such a great nursing uh, legend we have and in this video, I am going to explain uh, the difference between a conceptual model and a theory uh, based on uh, Fawcett's view. Okay, it is it is taken from her textbook. Okay, because she is the right person to explain us what exactly is uh, these both and how they are different. So without wasting much time, let us move on into the content. Uh, so in this video, the objective is that by the end of this video, you will able to have a clear idea what is the main difference between a model and a theory why is roy's adaptation model called as a conceptual model why we are not calling roy's adaptation model as a theory or why we say that orem's general system framework is a conceptual model it is not a theory so the reason behind the difference between a conceptual model and a theory you will get at least a small idea at the end of this video so According to Fawcett, she believed that there is a structural hierarchy of contemporary nursing knowledge. That is, she believed that, to tell it in a very simple words, she believed that nursing knowledge mainly depends on five main indicators. That is, like, number one is meta paradigm. Next, she believed is philosophy. Then comes conceptual model. Then comes theories. And finally, comes the empirical indicators. So, this is what she gave the diagram as structural hierarchy of contemporary nursing knowledge. And she said that, the the most abstract one is the meta paradigm and the most concrete one is the empirical indicator so today's uh, topic is lying somewhere in between i mean it is somewhere here where we find that there is a conceptual model and a theory now looking into this picture i understand that conceptual model is a little bit more abstract compared to that of a theory or i can say you that theory is little bit more specific compared to a conceptual model because conceptual model is very vague compared to a theory so which is more abstract conceptual model is more abstract which is uh, uh, more uh, concrete comparatively theory is said to be more concrete so this is what is the basic thing so in this uh, class we are going to discuss only about these two indicators of uh, nursing knowledge that is conceptual model and theories now what exactly is a conceptual model in the words of Fawcett a conceptual model is a relative it is a set of relatively abstract concepts 
uh, it is a set of general concepts that address the phenomena of central interest to a discipline. Okay, it has two propositions. One proposition which describes those concepts in a very broad way. The second proposition which is again abstract and it tries to tell a general relationship between two or more concepts. Now, what exactly is Fawcett trying to tell us? Fawcett is telling that a conceptual model means you have a set of concepts are there. But the only difference is these concepts are found to be very abstract one. These concepts are found to be very general words. Okay, you don't have a specific thing like for example, pain among oncology patients. You will not find such things in a conceptual model. You may find it as something like a discomfort. You may study something as a illness. You will not be specifically, you will not be able to tell that it is pain in oncology patient because the concepts are very abstract. The, the concepts are very general. That is what Fawcett wants us to be very clear about. If it is a conceptual model, it will tell only very abstract terminologies. It will highlight only very general terminologies. Number two, Fawcett says that in a conceptual model, there are two types of propositions. That is, one is called as relational proposition, another one is called as non-relational proposition. See, proposition, one proposition is like which is telling, which is trying to define what is the concept, okay? The definition also, you will find that it is very general, it is very abstract. Number two, the second proposition, which is trying to tell the relationship between two concepts. What is a proposition? A relational proposition will try to tell us the relation between two or more concept. Now that proposition which is trying to tell the relationship that also will be very general that also is found to be very abstract. I hope I am trying to uh, make the point clear that is conceptual model means it is a set of concepts. No doubt it is a set of concepts. These concepts are very abstract. These concepts are very general. A conceptual model will have two propositions. Okay, One set of proposition which is trying to explain that concept is also general. The second set of proposition which is trying to tell the relationship between the two concepts is also very general. Now let us read this again and see. It is a set of relatively abstract and general concepts that address the phenomena of central interest to a discipline. See, what Fawcett is telling is when a model is trying to tell okay of some in something which is of interest to a particular discipline discipline nursing is a discipline is it not nursing is a discipline physiotherapy is a discipline medicine is a discipline so anything which is of interest to a discipline of nursing if a model is trying to tell something as a set of concepts which are very abstract which are very general you call that as conceptual model and it has two propositions propositions that broadly describe those concepts it is not going to tell you specifically propositions are going to talk broadly about those concepts and propositions that state selectively abstract and general relation between two or more of the concept. I hope it is clear. So what can we just tell what is conceptual model? It is a model. It has a set of concepts. These concepts are found to be very abstract. And these uh, concepts are found to be very general. These concepts are all important to the discipline of nursing. Uh, there are propositions in a conceptual model. But these propositions are also very abstract. Okay, the definitions are found to be very abstract. The relationship between the concepts are also found to be very general, very broad. So, what is the takeaway of a conceptual model? It is very abstract. It is very general, right? It is very general. It is very abstract. Such concepts together is called as conceptual model. Now, uh, according to Fawcett, conceptual model, the terminology is found to share a similar meaning with the conceptual framework, conceptual system, paradigm, disciplinary matrix. So, Fawcett said that though I say it is a conceptual model, it is similar to conceptual framework. She believed it is similar to that of disciplinary matrix in the same meaning is conceptual system and so on. But there are different thoughts, okay? There are different viewpoints on what exactly is a conceptual model by different authors. According to Fawcett, I am telling you, conceptual model is synonymous with conceptual framework and conceptual system.
what are the characteristics of conceptual model i hope so far it is clear a conceptual model means it has a set of concepts which are general which are very abstract which are talking about something important to a discipline of nursing the propositions are very vague the propositions the, the relationship between the concepts are also found to be very vague and general okay now coming on to the characteristics of a conceptual model this is an important question from an exam point of view what is conceptual model what are the characteristics of conceptual model now one thing what we have to understand is the base is this that is conceptual model is not something new it is not something new to nursing it existed since people began to think about themselves and their surroundings conceptual model is there in all areas of life in all disciplines there are conceptual models everything a person sees hears reads experience everything is filtered through the lens of conceptual frame of reference what do you mean by that see for everything we have a concept we have a concept and like for example if someone is telling you that i have to you know i have so many works today okay or uh, say for example the um, uh, suppose we don't have a format for a uh, case study okay uh, or we don't have a format for writing a case report okay uh, the teacher is taking the students to the clinicals and she is telling okay you take care of the patient you collect all the details and you write and you submit okay now uh, there will be some people uh, it suppose there was no format for writing a case report or a case study what will happen is some students may write about the family history about the patient much sure but uh, this uh, student may not write about the physical examination findings but there are certain students who are writing about physical examination more but the history is comparatively less okay there are certain students who focus upon the disease condition and what are the comparisons of the signs and symptoms present in this patient they will highlight that and they will write okay so each one of us we have our own frame of reference how to write a case report or how to write a case study okay but then uh, we all have a set of reference right but if a teacher is going to give you a set of reference telling that see i want all of you to write and submit your assignment based on this format i want first a brief introduction about the patient then i need the uh, presenting complaints and the history of the patient followed by the physical examination then i want you to Uh, put up the investigations medications the disease condition and finally the nursing care plan now when a teacher is going to spell out all these things there is a frame of reference and now the student finds it easy to put her frame into the teacher's frame and then she is going to write and submit it so this is conceptual model conceptual model is not only according to fawcett conceptual model is not something that you study something very new in nursing it is there everywhere from the time a person started to think a person started to see a person started to read and experience we all have a set of concept within our mind the same way related to nursing like you know there are certain set of frame of references are there cognitive references are there how we should give care how we should approach a patient etc so that is what fawcett is saying conceptual model existed even when people began to think about themselves and their surroundings it is there not only in the area of nursing it is there in all areas of life suppose i have a few vegetables and i want to cook it okay i may have my own way, my own uh, frame of reference as how exactly i should cook this particular vegetable okay so everywhere we have our own frame of reference we we have that cognitive reference in all areas of life and in all discipline it is not only in nursing in all discipline there is conceptual model so everything we see hear read and experience is filtered through this cognitive frame of reference that conceptual frame of reference now the propositions of a conceptual model are so abstract and general that they are not amenable to direct empirical observation or test this is one of the characteristics of conceptual model the proposition what you read in a conceptual model are very abstract so because they are abstract you cannot you cannot test that proposition through empirical observation or research
okay so see uh, if you are going to see in some uh, nursing theories like prescriptive theories it is very you know straightforward okay the more you do this the more you will get this say for example it is like that okay it's very it's very crystal clear in a prescriptive theory where everything is put like if this goes up this may come down you can test that and see through research but in conceptual model the statement is so abstract the propositions are so abstract it is not amenable to research it is not amenable to empirical observation because the statement is very vague the statement is very abstract it cannot be tested through research directly that is one of the characteristics of conceptual model how it is different from a theory as conceptual model concepts are so abstract their definitions are also very broad because the concepts are abstract the proposition the, the definition is also abstract so you cannot bring it down to x y z no it is broad okay it is a very concept it is a very general statement you cannot test it empirically okay and the definitions are also found to be broad this is what we should understand about conceptual model for example adaptation level adaptation level is one of the concept which was given according to uh, sister callista roy in her adaptation model roy's adaptation model so she defined adaptation level like this adaptation level is defined as a changing point influenced by the demand of the situation and it is influenced by the internal resources that is a capability the hope the dream aspiration motivation all that makes human constantly move towards mastery see now this is one of the conceptual definition which is taken from a conceptual model i know conceptual model means the concepts are very abstract so i understand this adaptation level is very abstract i cannot test this and see very easily see what is roy telling adaptation level is a changing point which is influenced by two things influenced by number one the demand of the situation number two it is influenced by the internal resources how i am able to adapt with my environment depends on two things one is what is the demand outside in the environment number 2 what is my internal resource what is my level of motivation my capability my uh, aspiration my dreams based on this only my adaptation level will uh, you know it, it comes into that point like whether i am able to adapt well or not is determined by two things one is the external another one thing is internal now how will a researcher uh, be able to test this particular uh, uh, you know uh, statement how will uh, because it is not very clear exactly what is the demand of the situation it is not very clear that whether the uh, motivation when the motivation is high adaptation is also high roy did not tell like that she gave a very vague statement telling that it is a changing point influenced by these two things so in a conceptual model usually you find such you know you find such statements like this where it is very abstract and where it is very vague okay now because the concepts are so abstract propositions that state how the concepts are empirically observed are not found in conceptual model nor should they be expected see it's very important that a conceptual model should not have a proposition which is easily testable i hope it is clear which is very easily testable will not be there in a conceptual model it will be there, there in a theory you can test a theory but testing a conceptual model is comparatively it is not possible empirically you are not supposed to test the conceptual model if you are able to test it it is not a conceptual model it is a theory okay so that is what fawcett is making us very clear she is telling that that because in the, in a conceptual model the concepts are so abstract propositions that state how the concepts can be empirically observed should not be there empirically here it refers to research 
okay how to uh, test it by research um, uh, what are the ways we can test this proposition that all should not be there in a conceptual model if it is there it is not a conceptual model so very uh, easy point see again and again the same points are only coming up i'll tell you uh, you need not worry that it's very complex it's very simple conceptual model means it has lot of concepts all these concepts are very abstract all these concepts are very general okay the definition of these concepts are also vague the definition of these concepts are very abstract the relationship between these two concepts are also found to be abstract okay so empirically testing is not possible if you are able to test it empirically it's not conceptual model uh, it is conceptual model always talks about something which is important to a discipline of nursing the whole discipline generally you say it should be like this that that should be like that generally okay no relationship is specifically being told in a conceptual model now the relational proposition of a conceptual model that states the relationship between the concepts are also in a abstract and general way now adaptation level affects the human system's ability to respond positively in a situation now how will i test this empirically the statement is this adaptation level will affect okay my adaptation level will affect the ability of myself to respond positively in a situation the meaning is very simple if i have a very good adaptation level i will be able to respond positively in a given uh, situation but how are you going to test it how will you know what is my adaptation level how do you know i am able to positively cope up in a situation or not so that that easiness with which you can do a research is not possible in a conceptual model now evolution so these are the characteristics so what i should remember as characteristics of conceptual model as a student is number 1 it is there everywhere conceptual model is not something new it has existed from the time a person has started thinking seeing hearing experiencing and reading okay number 2 it is not only specific to nursing it is there in every discipline you have conceptual model number 3 conceptual model means the abstracts are found to be very general sorry the concepts are found to be very general the concepts are found to be very abstract the definition is also found to be abstract number 4 the concepts are the statement that tells the relationship between the two concepts are also abstract empirical testing is not possible directly with the help of a conceptual model so these are the few points which you should remember as characteristics of conceptual model now let us go into evolution now how did this people develop conceptual model how did roy's adaptation model come how did betty newman system model come how did the uh, uh, orem's general system framework come so what is the evolution how can a conceptual model evolve there are two ways number 1 it can evolve inductively it can evolve deductively what do you mean by inductively you know in research what is inductively from in to out is it not inductively moving from specific to general what is deductive from general to specific so conceptual model has been evolved by these two process number 1 is it evolves from insight of scholars it evolves from certain research studies certain uh, you know uh, certain uh, observation uh, based on the observation between a nurse and a patient based on the observation of a nursing situation you develop a conceptual model that is inductively deductively is you read a lot and you combine creatively you combine ideas from physiology psychology nursing everything together and then you develop a model okay so now both the examples we have in nursing so to be more clear it can be developed inductively or it can be developed deductively inductively is when you take specific observations when i as i am working in the clinicals as i am working with my students i observe and then i develop a model that is inductive deductively is when you when you read a lot and then uh, you try to apply certain concepts into a particular situation and you try to develop a model you call that as deductively 
Now we have two examples here. Oram was a person who developed her model inductively. What is inductively is like uh, Oram's we know general system framework. Actually how did Oram develop that thing is we know that uh, when we look into the biography of uh, Dorothy E. Oram. Oram has worked has a very rich experience uh, as uh, being a bedside nurse as being a clinical nurse. So her uh, experience in the uh, clinical uh, situation observing nurse Nurses, observing patients, observing nursing situations. So she, with her insight, with her observation, she developed a conceptual model that uh, this is when nurses uh, have to come into role. These are the various aspects of self-care. Okay, and this is a self-care agency. So she developed it uh, inductively. Whereas on the other hand, we know about uh, Mira Estrin Levin. Levin, uh, actually, she developed a conservational model. It's a very wonderful theory, conservational model. And uh, Levin in her theory, um, I'm sorry, Levin in her conceptual model, conservational model, has actually told about uh, from where did, she, how did she develop this conservational model? She took all the ideas from various, uh, 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 from various aspects and then she tried to develop develop a conservational model in order to develop the nursing process. So we find that uh, both the cases are there. You can develop inductively or you can develop deductively. Inductively is through observations, through insight, uh, through reading, you can come to a, you can develop a model just like how Oram did it. And uh, on the other hand, like Levin, who uh, deduced her model, from uh, various disciplines, from various areas, she tried to develop and apply it as a nursing process model. So that is about evolution. So evolution, how can you evolve it? Two ways, inductively or directively. Why should we have a conceptual model? What are the functions? Number one, it, is, it provides a frame of uh, references. Okay, only when we have a conceptual model, we have something as a reference. You can say that, why don't you look into a uh, uh, conservational model, what Levin is talking about. When you give care for a critically ill patient, why don't you uh, read on uh, the conservation part, what Levin is trying to explain. There is a frame of reference. Okay, uh, there is a set of expectations. Uh, see, uh, the main good thing about the conceptual model is it gives us a unified way of thinking about an event and a process. Now, when we are using, say, Levin's conservational model for patient care, okay, now you can think like this. You can you can frame like when all of us in a critical care unit are using Levin's conservational model, there is a unified way of thinking and uh, approaching the patient. Okay, so that is the best thing. It provides a frame of reference. Number two, it tells us how to observe and how to interpret the phenomena of interest to the discipline. What to observe in a critically ill patient, how to observe it, okay, what can be done. All those things are uh, given uh, crystal clear in a conceptual model. The unique focus of each conceptual model is different. Just like I have told you in the theory uh, videos before, uh, the every theory is looking into a different lens. Okay, so same way conceptual model also every uh, uh, the author of every conceptual model the theorists are looking into each aspect. Like for example, Oram looked into self care, Betty Newman looked into stressors, Levin looked into conservation. So there is a unique focus about each model and uh, based on that focus only you will find certain concepts are there in each conceptual model. Oram has included self-care. She has not included about uh, stimuli. Uh, Roy has included about stimuli. Roy has not talked about self-care which means that uh, every uh, author of a conceptual model is having a unique focus and based on that you can find that there are specific concepts in each uh, model. Okay, now Newman system model is uh, mainly on preventing reaction to stressors. Oram's uh, self-care model is about how to enhance a person's uh, self-care ability. Okay, so each one of each one of them are looking into each aspect, and that can help in the growth of nursing profession. Then adaptation model. Now, for example, it focuses on the adaptation of a person to the stimuli. Okay, that is Roy's adaptation model. We know that there is focal stimuli, contextual and residual stimuli. So adaptation model is focusing on adaptation based on a particular stimuli. Now the question is what are the most relevant stimuli? A nurse who is giving care based on Roy's adaptation model can think what are the most relevant stimuli for this particular 
adaptation and uh, whenever a patient is entering into an adaptation problem she can think about what are the ways of managing the stimuli and what are the signs and symptoms that a person is adapting well to the situation so so many things we can think when we are uh, using conceptual model to provide uh, patient care okay so conceptual model is something very important in nursing uh, because it provides a unified way of thinking and uh, it uh, helps us to give us a focus on <coughs> sorry it helps us to give a focus on uh, what are the specific areas uh, for each conceptual model related to nursing now uh, roy gave importance to adaptation uh, betty newman gave importance to stress sir. so it, it gives us a clear idea what are the various aspects a nurse should take care when she is giving care based on a conceptual model okay so next is conceptual models in nursing so so far what we have studied is a conceptual model is having a set of concepts concepts are vague concepts are abstract two propositions are there definition is also abstract relationship is also abstract these are the various things we study then we understood that people developed this conceptual model either inductively or deductively the most important characteristic of a conceptual model is that it should not have empirically tested uh, propositions okay if there are if you can do easily research and if you can test all the propositions which is given in a conceptual model it is not a conceptual model because a conceptual model propositions means it should usually very abstract it is usually very general what is the function in order to have a unified way of thinking in order to have a unified way of providing care in order to find out what are the various focuses according to every author of a conceptual model okay you, the nursing care is found to be enhanced while you give care based on the conceptual model now coming on to conceptual models in nursing okay who was the first person who developed this model the first thing it goes to nightingale okay since nightingale was the person but uh, during those days nightingale did not develop and say that this is a conceptual model of okay she just developed she just wrote a lot of things but ever since nightingale's period itself that conceptual frame of reference has started okay so it was not actually just like roy told that this is how that model is or betty newman drew the model all early people did not have but that is also considered as a conceptual model now nowadays we have so many model uh, johnson's behavioral system model it is not a theory it is a behavioral system model we know johnson's behavioral system is not a, a easily testable model okay even when i have taken class uh, through the videos i have told you that uh, it is not so easy to apply johnson's behavioral system she talks about eight systems related to behavior and uh, uh, starting from uh, uh, affiliative system uh, attachment system okay so so many interdependency system you have so many systems but easily you can't test it by uh, research then we have king's general system framework i am not talking about king's theory of interpersonal goal attainment no yeah, it's not about theory uh, actually the first thing you remember in my video i have shown you a picture of king's uh, general system framework that is that individual uh, then you have that group and that uh, society right that is an individual uh, general system framework that is a conceptual model then levin's conservational model betty newman system model orem self care framework orem's theory is there orem's theory is theory of self care deficit that is theory but uh, first what orem developed was orem self care framework from that framework only she developed later theory okay then same way rogers you all will agree with me rogers is such a beautiful theory but you know that rogers actually you will find that um, unitary science human being it is not easily testable uh, model okay so rogers comes actually under conceptual model roy's adaptation model so uh, why we should have a conceptual model in nursing now this is the uh, uh, this is a verbatim uh, given by rayli in 1975 she has also contributed a lot uh, giving her perceptions related to nursing theories and models see this is the essence what we should understand why we should have conceptual model in nursing we all have a private image of nursing practice we all have private image for everything not only for nursing practice for everything we all have have our own private image uh, this is how we should do 
or uh, this is how I will do. You will say, no, no, this is how I will do. Okay, so all of us are having a private image about nursing practice. In turn, this private image will influence our interpretation of data. This private image will influence our decision. This private image is going to influence our action. But uh, can a discipline continue to develop when its members are holding so many different private images? No. So, the proponents of a conceptual model is trying to make us aware of these private images so that we can begin to identify commonalities in our perception and move towards the evolution of a well-ordered concept. See, all of us are having our own image of how certain things should be done. Now, for example, say there are 50 students in a class and you are planning to conduct a farewell party, okay, for your, uh, say, seniors, okay, or, uh, or uh, say, uh, instead of a farewell party let us say that we are planning to have a, a new year celebration or a say christmas celebration near campus and uh, yeah like i may have a view how the program schedule should be uh, say uh, student number one two three four every one of us we have a private image of how things should go on but can we have 50 different types of program schedule for christmas day celebration no, it is not possible. So what should be done? We have to try to uh, talk to each other, try to share the commonalities. Say, for example, few people are telling there should be a welcome speech. And so we agree, right? There should be a welcome speech. There should be a prayer song. Okay, so we try to... Uh, we try to share our commonalities and uh, we try to, uh, this is what is the thing, we try to make, we are aware of all these private images so that we begin to identify commonalities in our perceptions and we are trying to move towards the evolution of a well-ordered concept. So the same thing is what is happening in nursing. Every one of us, we have a private image of how what a nurse should do or how she should provide patient care what should be her assessment but then a discipline of nursing okay nursing cannot move based on each and everyone's private image there should be a shared way of thinking about it there should be a commonality of the way how a nurse should provide care and based on that Everybody agrees and we move on with the nursing care profession. In fact, even developing a syllabus for a course, every nursing teacher may have this important, this topic should be included. This topic should be included. But then every one of you, how you tell nursing uh, students cannot study everything. There should be a commonality. We have to share that commonality and then you put it as a syllabus and then the students start studying it. So that is why we need conceptual models in nursing. One important key point, the private image, okay? The private image is going to be modified into a common image of our perception. And then we use that conceptual model for nursing practice. So the private image is going to become the explicit presentation okay that implicit private image is going to become an explicit presentation and that is called as conceptual model implicit is that private image what i have explicit is the conceptual model what i have okay so all of our private images are implicit okay that is going to be converted into a formal presentation that is explicit conceptual model so this will provide a practical orientation how nurses should provide care a service which provides dimension to total care different from that of another health professional that is the importance of conceptual models and theories how exactly is nursing different from other disciplines okay so to bring out that okay you need a conceptual model you need a theory so conceptual model is going to tell us practically what should be done by a nurse when she is providing care to a patient okay so it provides a philosophy conceptual model provides a practical orientation as how nurses should provide care for the patient so thereby the purpose of the nursing is made clear the scope of the nursing is made clear the mission the boundaries of profession everything is made clear crystal clear by conceptual model so and also it helps to maintain the consistency in nursing practice because 
there is communication among nurses, conflict is reduced. Okay, so we all are working with a unified way of giving care. We are using our private image, uh, the private, the implicit private image is converted into an explicit conceptual model and we are providing care. We know what is our boundary on a profession. We know the mission of our profession. We know that there is a consistency in the nursing practice when we have a conceptual model and thereby there is a systemic approach to research, education, administration and practice. So this is what has Fawcett has made clear in a conceptual model. So students actually it is a very easy topic. Okay, conceptual model is not very difficult, though it may sound difficult, it is actually a very easy topic. Please understand only this much. When there was nothing like what should be nursing, okay, everyone had some ideas in their mind as a private image, this can be nursing. And later on, those private images by certain nurse scholars were put into a model as an explicit way saying that this is how a conceptual model is and based on this we can provide nursing care but only difference is a conceptual model okay a conceptual model the concepts are very abstract it is very general it will not be very simple for you to test by research that is not possible but you can use conceptual model to provide nursing care but the concepts are very abstract the concepts are very general. The relationship between the concepts are also very general. Empirical testing is not possible. You can develop a model either inductively or deductively. Now coming on to just two slides about nursing theories. I am not going to explain because we have had enough of explanation with a lot of videos on nursing theories. So according to Fawcett, you know, meta paradigm, philosophy, conceptual model, nursing theory. Nursing theory is the fourth component in the structural hierarchy of contemporary nursing knowledge. And uh, what we have to understand is, okay, theories are derived from conceptual model. I want that point to be very clear. Nursing theories are developed from conceptual model. That point should be very clear. Students should understand that. From where is the theory coming? The theory comes from the conceptual model. So, compared to a conceptual model, a theory is concrete. It is not very abstract. But again, in nursing theories, you have ranges. That is, you have a grand theory, middle range theory, then you have prescriptive theories, partial theories like that, okay. So, com com conceptual model is very abstract. Theory is less abstract, okay. But again in theories, you have, again in theories, you have grand theories. Then a little bit more specific middle range theories. Very, very specific prescriptive theories. This is what we should understand. So, the more abstract a theory, you call it as grand theory. The more concrete, you call it as middle range theory. Very, very concrete, you call it as prescriptive theory. Now, grand theory is derived from a conceptual model. So, from where is a grand theory developed? From a conceptual model. From a grand theory, you can develop a middle range theory. I will tell you once again, conceptual model. From conceptual model, you can develop grand theories. From grand theories, you can develop middle range theories. One more option is there. Middle range theories can straightly be developed from a conceptual model. Okay, now let us see an example here. Grand theory is developed from a conceptual model. And from that grand theory, you can develop a middle range theory. For example, Aligood derived the middle range theory. Okay, Aligood she derived a middle range theory. The name of the theory is creativity actualization. It is a middle range theory. From where did Aligood derive this middle range theory? She derived it from Rogers' grand theory of accelerating evolution. So from Rogers' grand theory, Aligood derived the middle range theory. Rogers, you know, Martha E. Rogers theory of uh, model of, uh, you know, that uh, uh, unitary science human being energy field model. 
that is a mother model from there a lot of theories have been developed okay so rogers theory grand theory of accelerating evolution was derived from that grand theory who derived a middle range theory alibi middle range theories can also be directly derived from the conceptual model it is not that you have to develop a grand theory from that you have to develop a middle range no directly from the conceptual model you can develop a middle range theory example king king is a perfect example because king developed the conceptual model that is called as general system framework you remember that general system framework from that general system framework king developed the middle range theory what is a theory theory of goal attainment theory of goal attainment so what do i understand based on this a conceptual model is the mother from the mother you have children right so conceptual model is mother from that you can develop either a grand theory or you can develop a middle range theory understood so from the conceptual model say for example general system framework directly a middle range theory theory of goal attainment came but there is there are certain other models where you have from the model first you develop a grand theory like rogers accelerated evolution grand theory from that theory again you develop a middle range theory ali goods uh, middle range theory of creativity empathy etc so function of a theory is comparatively narrow function of a theory is specified okay and it provides a concrete specific structure which one theories whereas conceptual models are very abstract so what is the uh, conclusion for today's video you should be very clear that if somebody is asking you what is the difference between a conceptual model and a theory you should be able to tell it very clearly conceptual model is very general it is very abstract conceptual model is talking about the conceptual frame of reference it talks about something very common to a discipline of nursing what all should be there what are the various things in a strasser model okay newman system model okay like that it talks in general the definitions are general the relationships are general you cannot test it empirically you can develop it inductively you can develop it deductively empirical testing is not possible in a conceptual model theories can be derived from a conceptual model from a conceptual model you can develop either a grand theory or you can develop a middle range theory theory is comparatively concrete theory is comparatively narrow theory testing is possible conceptual model testing by empirical measures is not possible i hope it is clear okay so it's not very difficult thing only thing is you should have a clear idea conceptual model is more abstract more general compared to a nursing theory nursing theory is within our hands it is within our reach but if you are a very good uh, uh, researcher if you are a budding theorist i will tell you look into conceptual model see whether you can derive any theories from conceptual model okay so that you can say that this middle range theory was developed from that model okay so it's something like that so though we find that there is a we should understand that conceptual model is different from a nursing theory in fact conceptual model is more superior than a nursing theory so i would like to uh, place my heartfelt thanks to all my uh, viewers for your great encouragement and support i hope this video will be useful to all of you especially to all my dear nursing students